Hey coaches, this is Jason, and I got a great question in, in an email by a user that I thought I would make a video on to better explain my thought process on if-then statements. And so I th was thinking about it for a little while because the coach was asking um, for uh, if the system, if the pro spread, pro style spread offense system had things in it that um, if a defense did one thing to you, then you could do another thing back to them. And so there's a couple different levels that I want to explain my answer um, to this because, yes, it does, and it, and it is actually built into the system. So there's um, my, my first point with this is the fact that you don't have to actually run two different plays to be able to adjust to if the defense says this, then we do that. You can actually run the same play, and I'm going to demonstrate this right here, and if the defense lines up differently or defends it differently, you still run that same play. It's just um, the way the play is executed will work against um, the, the different way that they have lined up or they are playing it. So, for example, power is one of my best examples of this because it's a very simple play and it can it can basically be run against any kind of defense. All right. And and defenses will blitz. I mean, what happens if teams blitz you and you had a play called um but that play doesn't work well against a blitz, what do you do? So the number one solution to handling this kind of change in defenses is to have plays and run plays, at least core plays, doesn't have to be all of your plays, but your core plays should be able to be run against pretty much anything a defense shows you or with a few very minor simple tweaks your players can understand how to run it against something different all right so and this is why the scouting report is so important in that you get um, a very clear picture of what a defense is going to do against you as a team even though you never truly know 100 percent you can get a very good idea and most of the time it works out the way you thought because if defenses are smart they're not going to be doing a whole bunch of crazy different things every week. They're going to stick to their basics and fundamentals. They are going to have some wrinkles for you, though, so you need to be ready for that. So let's look at power here. This is against a base 4-3 defense with a two-high safety shell. Now they're either in cover 4 where they're coming up to defend um, and play the alleys, or they're in cover 2 where they've got corners low and outside here, and the corners are run support and safeties are deep halves. Um, either way, the interior here, you've got um, seven in the box. All right, so when we're drawing up power, if you just look, the reason you'd want to run to the strong side here is because if you look at the numbers in the box and the way they're balanced, you have um, the mic is split because he's down the middle, and then you have one, two, three to the strong side and one, two, three to the weak side. So with your additional numbers, you have... Um, one, two, three, four blockers to the strong side, and with power you're going to bring an additional, a fifth blocker over here in great shape to run power over here, which you should run power over here all day until they um, unbalance their formation and try and match, match you up to this side. So our basic power rules um, are down to the uh, backside linebacker, but against a 4-3 front that equates to the second linebacker in which is the Mike linebacker. You get a great double team um, right here with the tackle and the guard. Center is back or on, so back. And then the left guard is going to pull. He's going to wrap around to the play side backer, and the fullback is kicking out the end. So it's a great look. Give the ball to the halfback. Have him shoot right through um, uh, your uh, C-gap right there. Okay? Um, so this is how you would run it against this defense. Now, what if a defense presented you with something else? Well, here's what you could do. And give me a second here to clear off what I just drew up. All right, let's <clears throat> let's say um, that the defense shifts into an under front. All right, and what they're probably going to do here, um, 
So they're going to walk everybody inside and they're going to walk um, a, a backer up outside. And now they're a little more, um, basically it looks like a 52. Yeah, sorry, it should be under front is, yeah, this is what, this is what I'm looking at here. So this is a 4-3 under, but because you have a tight end, they're going to have to walk um, a Sam linebacker up on the defensive end. Or sorry, the tight end. All right, so you get a front like this. Now let's look at our numbers here. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 to the strong side, which matches 1, 2, 3, 4 your numbers um, to that side. And then, you, and then they have 1, 2, 3 to the back side, which... Um, right now you're outnumbered to the backside, so it's still good to run to this side out of this formation. However, you could shift your um, backer over to the weak side and run um, the play that we call bow or back on end. And the only reason we're calling it that is because it tells the lineman, tells the left tackle that um, that he is the first man down or inside blocker. It changes his role. Um, he's not, he, he's no longer concerned when there's a tight in there, he's looking for, um, uh, down or on. Now he's strictly looking for down. Okay. So now we have a nice clear three on three or a four on four to this side. So you have options at this point where you could, um, shift the fullback over and you could run bow back to this side. And with your guard pulling around, you get a very nice look over here. So I'll draw that up for you right here. First man down inside. Um, we can get a, actually we can get a combo here to the back side. We get a nice back block there. Guard pulls and leads up on the play side backer. Full back kicks out. And there you go. So now you have this as an option for, um, uh, for a play to the weak side. All right, but you could also still run it to the strong side if we put the fullback over here. First man down inside. Um, now he's going to go. No one, no one's on his gap. Um, he does have someone on him. Um, unless that end is just shaded off the off the tight end. Let's say that end is actually just a shade on the tight end, so he's not actually on the tackle. So we're going to send him back to the back side. And then here's your double team right here. Um, and you could, yeah, actually what you want to have here is you either want to have the center or the left tackle make a UU, -U, have the center make a U, or the left tackle make a UUU -U -U or a me, me, me call. Whoever's better at identifying that, usually I have the center call it. Um, he'd probably have a tough time getting back there to that um, nose. So we're going to have him scoop here. And we're going to have him double here. Okay. And yes, that does leave the end free, but um, he, should, he should not be able to get there in time to make a play. Wrap him around. Up to the play side, Mike. Full back kicking the end out. So you can run this to either side, but even though the defense changed what you're doing, it's still, if they do this, then we can still run the same play, or we can now run another play to the other side. So if then may make you change it, or it may not make you change it. Um, the one thing that defenses will sometimes do to force you to change your blocking scheme is they will change the gap assignments for the def the um, their defenders. So the safety now, let's say that he shoots down inside. I'll draw a little arrow right here. Let's say now he's going to take this gap inside. They're going to slant these guys inside here. Um, they're going to pinch that end inside there to take the um, C and D gaps away because they don't want you running into C gap. All right. Well. As the safety comes down inside and the tight end is down on the end, okay, this is a little bit 
let's say actually the safety's not going to slant across. He's not going to pinch inside. Let me clarify here. As the safety squeezes inside, so he's riding the hip of that tight end down inside here. So the tight end is blocking down inside, and the right tackle is going to um, pick up that end if he pinches hard enough across inside. Um, but if he doesn't, then the tight end's got him. Um, or they work a double team to the backside backer. All right, that puts your F in a nearly impossible bl position block here to kick him out. All right, he just can't do it. So instead, because he's taking a nice tight angle, he is literally going to just seal him, seal him down inside, and the left guard reads that seal block, and we carry on the play outside. And he just follows on outside, and there we go. Boom. It's as simple as that. All right? Um, so you can see your if then, if they do this, then what do you do? You can have it built into the very play, or you can see what they're adjusting to and run a different play. It's, it's much, much harder, in my opinion, though, to call a play that won't work against a certain kind of defense. All right, always find a way that if there's a look that, that doesn't work, that you can just automatically adjust the blocking scheme so that it does, or at, le at the very least, you don't get the play blown up. Okay, and ISO, our ISO play is a good example of that. And what I mean by that is, what happens if you're running an ISO, and I'll show this here really quickly for you here, or what we also call read. And the fullback has the inside linebacker on ISO. What if that Mike linebacker blitzes? Okay, so we're trying to run into this gap here. And he's walked up and he's right there. I mean, you you know, at the unless you have a completely ridiculously amazing fullback who can still open up a hole against one of their best defenders, or he's really not very good and you don't worry about it at all. Um, this is a tough play to run. So, um, we would have a call, basic down call, where if the right tackle sees, normally he's man on, man on the man over him, blocking him out or blocking him down. If he sees someone step into that inside gap inside of him, he's going to change his assignment and he's going to block down. And what the down call tells everybody else that they're blocking down now. And, and he can make the call, but even if it happens literally right before the snap, he should have his eyes up and aware enough to know that this could be just an automatic Okay, um, the fullback then sees the down call. He's going to basically step up and then work out and kick out the Sam. So now we have what, what amounts to this, um, a power look, but without a pulling guard. And that play is blocked. It's sound. It's fundamental. Every person is blocked. And that's a simple down, down, down. If the right tackle sees a mic stepping up, down, 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 fullback knows I'm now kicking out the end because he's pulling everybody else down with him. And if, he, and if there is no one here um, and the tackle's coming down anyway and there's a hole right there and the tight end stays on him, the, full, the fullback can just fill up in the hole wherever um, there's a window. Okay? But... You see how within this simple play, you can have an adjustment so that um, the play can still get off. You can you still have a chance of success. All right. Now there are some exceptions. Maybe in this situation, if a backer comes up and you see a team really um, showing you a certain look, maybe in a goal line situation, and you say, "All right, if that backer walks up, all right, we're going to audible to a pop pass. All right, so we're going to yell popcorn, popcorn, or whatever." our pop pass word is okay and um, and then the quarterback's gonna fake it to the H 
and the tight end's going to step down and then release right behind that Mike linebacker. Boom, touchdown. Okay, so there's just a couple of examples of, of if they do this, then what do you do and how you can build that into your game plan. Um, there's unlimited ways to do this in my other course um, that is also included in the pro-style spread offense whole system. You get um, you get the bubble screen course, and there's a um, I've got a bunch of different things in the bubble screen course where if they do this or if they leave him um, uncovered, then you throw the bubble. If they cover him up, then you throw the bubble slant or the bubble go, all sorts of things like that. Okay, it's it's very easy to kind of piece together with a couple plays, um, but you know what to do. But basically you're looking at the play and you're identifying with what they're showing you and how they're playing it, which play gets um, the best number of players blocking their number of players. See which play looks good as far as the gaps that are open that you're attacking and attacking players that are covered um, or uncovered. And then you try and run those plays. So Kind of the if-then really depends on the defense you're playing. Some defenses will adjust quickly and will show a lot of different looks um, every play or every other play or every different situation. And it's your job as an offensive coach to identify what that defensive does. Every now and then you come up against a defensive coordinator who says, I'm not going to switch no matter what. And you can just kind of sit in those looks that you can uh, that you know will give you um, the best opportunities out of them. Um, but those are, you know, if that's what a defensive coordinator does, good for you. It's, it's your good fortune because it makes it very simple. Um, but if they don't, you need to have those core plays built in where if they change what they're doing um, and you had a play called, it's not on you to, uh, to try and get your quarterback to change the entire play call at the line of scrimmage. That's a very highly advanced skill and not one that I recommend um, high school coaches really dig in and do a whole lot of. Unless that's your base offense, and it's a core run play, and you feel really good about an adjustment to it, but keep it very simple and don't do that very often. All right, coaches, hopefully that helps answer the if they do this, then you do this, um, or then you do that question. Um, if you have any questions, head on over to my website, shoot me in, or respond to one of my emails, and I'll do my best to answer it as quickly as I can.